Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the curriculum choices that I have for my upcoming first grader. Now to clarify, these are just the subjects that pertain to just her. We do a lot of family style learning for science and history and Bible and I'll be sharing that in a later video. So um, these are just things that pertain to just a first grader. So I'll go ahead and get started and I'm going to start with math. If you've watched any amount of my videos where I'm sharing what curriculum we choose for our kiddos, you know that we use Saxon and honestly it has worked for every single kid that we've had. They know nothing different and so we're just kind of continuing on with it. Um, if your kid needs lots of simulation, beautiful pictures, things like that, this probably isn't the curriculum for you. It is very straightforward. It doesn't have a um, color. It doesn't have lots of pictures, things like that. So um, these are the things that come with her. So I have a teacher guide that comes along and then she gets these little books. Um, you've probably seen me show them before. This has seashell stuck to it probably from our beach adventures if you followed along with us you know that we were in Myrtle Beach for six months anyway I digress so here is her meeting book this is where we do a lot of the morning things where we learn about calendar um, uh, taking temperatures graphing temperatures so this is just the meeting book that kind of starts our math lesson every day and along with it she has her um, let's see this is part two so this is the correct one that she'll start with but these are the worksheets that she completes every day. So she usually has uh, one worksheet and then a math fact worksheet that she'll do every day. So again, she is in first grade. You might be a little confused that it says math too. In my family, we have just found that leveling up one grade in Saxon makes it a little bit um, or kind of levels the playing field. The If I were to be doing level one with her for this upcoming year, it would probably be a little too easy. We did level one in kindergarten and we did kindergarten and preschool. So um, that's just what we found in our family. If you're unsure of where to start, maybe this is your first year and you're not sure where to jump in, maybe check out Saxon's website. You can take a placement test, find out where your kiddo should start. But for our family, uh, we found that we need to level up a grade. So she has two sets of those uh, worksheets that go with it. And they also come with like a set of flashcards. Sorry for the glare. Um, but yeah, some flashcards that go along with it. So I have the teacher's edition, the, the teacher's book. I've used it for all the boys uh, but ahead of her. So we'll just continue on through that. And um, that'll be what I'm using. It's a spiral approach. So I don't have to get a new teacher's book to go along with it. Now that's math and that's all we'll do for math. That'll be her, um, her math lessons in our Saxon. Now let's go ahead and move on to language. So again, um, I'm kind of gonna be repeating a lot of things, but if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that for the younger grades, we use a Becca. We're talking about learning phonics, learning how to read. And so um, it has worked really well for all the boys. Actually, Eden is already starting to do a little bit of reading. So I found that it's actually worked relatively well for us. And so we're just continuing on with it. So here's the teacher's guide that goes along with it. Now I will say, if you look at the books, this is an old one because remember I have an, a, a seventh grader. So I've gone through this several times. A lot of these books actually do not look like this anymore. So, um, I'll kind of explain here in a moment. Um, let's see that. So this is like the main spine of what we're using. This is learning, uh, teaching her how her phonics and how to read. And it goes along with a lot of these little workbooks. And we're talking like worksheets, where she's just doing some activities where she's learning how to read and point out um, maybe how, like this one's asking how many syllables are in a word, you know, reading a sentence and finding the word that best completes the sentence, filling in bubbles, you know, making compound words by drawing a line between the two, writing a, you know, here's a picture of a rainbow. So then it would teach her how to write the word rainbow matching opposites, things like that. And it comes, I have a couple of different books that we get. We get language one. We also get letters and sounds one. You'll notice I don't have this open because I get the loose leaf um, option because we end up putting the ones that we keep, I end up putting in a binder for our assessor. Um, but if I open it really quick here, I can kind of show you maybe what one pick, one of the pages might look like. 
um, very similar to the other worksheets that we just did here. Um, this one's more so working on um, the rules of your the letters and the sounds that they make. So, you know, here it says, remember at the top, remember that when there's one vowel in a word, it usually makes its short sound, like the example in nut. So that kind of teaches. So with that said, what I'm saying is how they don't really line up. A lot of times I've found in the, um, with Ezra and Eden, as they are my last kiddos going through these um, books, is that they've redone the worksheets and have redone the books, but I haven't forked out the extra money to get the new book. So a lot of times the lesson necessarily isn't matching up with the worksheet. So how do I, how do I use this? So a lot of times I will still teach the lesson in the book, and then I'll notice that maybe this was probably the lesson that they were teaching in the book. And so we just go ahead and kind of review that too. So you might say that she might be getting, you know, one and a half, maybe two lessons every day. Sometimes they line up, sometimes they don't, but I'm teaching what's in here and I'm just going ahead and reiterating the, the learning lesson at the top as well. So, um, if you are new to it and you're going to get an older copy, uh, maybe off eBay or, you know, at a homeschool sale or something, just be aware that the new worksheets don't always line up. And if you are looking for something that can really um, tie together and help you get through the lessons, it's your first year and you're unsure of how to do this, maybe just uh, have that as a word of warning. Um, for someone um, I've done, this is my fourth time through, there are a lot of times I'm just kind of skimming through, making sure that I'm hitting all the big things and I don't do a lot of stuff out of here anymore but that was not how it was in my first year so don't feel like you you need to be fluent in all of it before you go I certainly was not I really did use this book a lot the first year but the more times you go through it the more you learn so the other thing is another that I have to go along with the Abeka is writing with phonics. So this is just working on her writing, her penmanship, um, and making sure that she's forming her letters correctly. You will see I do manuscript and um, up through first grade, at second grade, we switch over and we learn cursive. So she's still working on forming her letters. She's a lefty and that adds a little bit of extra challenges, um, but we are muddling through it. We have some backward letters that we still need to kind of figure out and um, do but she's actually doing a really good job with it so again this is another loose leaf one but if you see down here it's just it's pretty much just giving you some letters and words and she's got to copy them and you'll see you know with three worksheets that is a lot so if I happened to look at them now you may not have all three one day some days you might I do, as the parent, take it within my liberty to say, okay, that's too many worksheets for today. I might cross out a couple of activities. I might cross out a line. I might throw a worksheet completely away and just be like, don't do it. So um, that's another word of advice too, is if you find they've got a lot of worksheets, a lot of busy work, you know, you are the parent. You don't have to um, do all of the things that it says to do. So make the curriculum work for you. Don't work for the curriculum. So that's the big thing, um, Abeka. It does come, we do have spelling, and I don't think that it starts, it doesn't start immediately. Yeah, it doesn't start for like 20 to 30 lessons before you even pop into spelling. So we have that. This is one that I've used for older kids, and unfortunately, I never let them write in it. So Eden's the lucky winner as being the last, so she finally gets to write inside the notebook that we have. And a couple of other things that we've had in the past that we use are the letters and sounds uh, test and test key. And that's just like a periodic um, test, maybe every you know 10 or so lessons, where it's just checking on her ability to, you know, if I say a special sound or some letters that she can formulate and be able to write them, obviously as it progresses, gets to more of like a spelling test. So that's the main thing with Abeka. Now we do supplement with one other language piece and that is first language lessons. So this is talking mostly about the grammar of um, language. We're talking about the eight parts of speech and learning how to you know, define, okay, what is a noun? And then we practice the definition of a noun. It also practices on poem memorization and um, also learning to like study a photograph, not a photograph, maybe like a piece of art and be able to talk about it. And also working on skills 
skills of listening to stories and being able to retell the story in your own word. So kind of like dictation exercises. So this has absolutely, in our and the way I use it in our home, has zero written work. It is all auditory and um, dictation where they are going to recite things back to me, retell a story to me, answer some questions, or just recite some basic definitions. You know, what is a noun? What is a verb? What is an adverb kind of thing? Um, the lessons are very short and sweet, you know, um, so here, you know, here's an example. Here is a poem memorization that they'll do and work on. This one's talking about what is a noun. You can see um, I do have the definition scribbled out. Uh, we have done classical conversations in the past, which also does um, has uh, memorization of the eight parts of speech and has definitions for them. Since we had learned them previously under that kind of curriculum, if you will, under classical conversations, instead of learning two separate definitions for noun, I just took what we had already previously learned and put it in this book. So you'll see that I've scratched out and put in the definition that I know and use all the time, according to classical conversations when we were in it. Um, here's an example of a story and then some questions just to make sure that they're able to listen to a story, figure out the main points and then retell it back to you. So it kind of goes through several things. I would say that these lessons are short and sweet, sometimes can be anywhere from five to 10 minutes, but it, it helps us get some of that memory work um, since we're no longer part of a co-op or anything where we do some of that memorization. This is a good resource to continue. All my boys did this, so we're just kind of continuing through as well. So that kind of sums up the, um, the math and the language component, which are the two big things. The last thing that I wanna share that I'm having Eden do, and actually all of my kiddos, and they started it at the end of the uh, last year, was they were doing um, typing without tears. And so I started realizing with my older boys, you know, who were in um, doing writing papers and wanting to type their papers out, that they actually were like typing, like, you know, pecking each little key with their fingers and realized that I hadn't gotten the boys started early enough with typing. And so Typing Without Tears is an online computer program that allows them to learn and you know, learn basics with them, the mouse and learn the basics with the home row and typing. And then as you progress, you're able to, you know, fluently type. So I started all the kids, they each have their own login and can do these kind of interactive games and typing. And so she will also be continuing that as well. So that's another little component that I've kind of thrown into the mix. Um, that's, you know, pertaining just to her. She can, op I can get open the computer and get her started and then she's able to work on it independently now that we've done it a few times. So that's something that she'll be working on on her own as well. But um, other than that, that's pretty much what her curriculum is gonna look like. Again, we'll have some other subjects, but we do that in our morning family time where we're gonna do it all together. Obviously what I expect of Eden as a first grader will be vastly different than what I expect of Gabriel, who is my seventh grader. So um, they'll, she won't be having a lot of extra stuff to do with it. It's mainly going to be just some retelling, some dictation, you know, what did I read about? What did we talk about? And then maybe have a little notebook for science or history where she can draw what we talked about or write a little sentence or a diagram, whatever it might, you know, if we're talking science, it might be a diagram of, you know, a body, you know, and labeling parts or a fish and labeling the fins or, you know, whatever that is. So, so again, that is it. That's all I have for Eden for this upcoming year. If you have any questions or you want to see something a little bit more in depth, please let me know. You can drop those questions in the comment box down below and I'd be happy to answer them. And as usual, guys, have a blessed day.